Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the first webinar of the 2020 Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Um, my name is Lisa, and I am the Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. We also have Ivy here from Cincinnati Magazine. So thank you everyone for attending. Um, today we're going to be going over uh, some challenge basics that you'll need to be reminded of for this year's uh, giving uh, challenge. We'll also talk about uh, some refreshing, refresher uh, platform tools and features, leaderboards and prizes, rules, and then at the very end, we'll be going over questions. Uh, please utilize the go to webinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen of your screen to ask any questions you have. Um, and again, we'll go through that at the very end. OK, so to go over some challenge basics, I'm going to pass this over to Ivy. Okay, so I think we're just running into some technical difficulties. No worries, I um, will keep it moving forward. So Cincinnati, Cincinnati Magazine's mission for the Community Gives Challenge is to create an opportunity for the readers and nonprofits to make a meaningful connection, right? So you wanna, they're trying to engage your audience across multiple platforms to leverage your reach, there's over $35,000 in prize money available to participating organizations in the online challenge, over 30,000 circulation for the guide to giving, and organizations that participate in both the guide and the giving challenge get all of the benefits. Um, So Cincinnati's Magazine Guide to Giving and Cincinnati's a Guide to uh, the Giving Challenge, there is an opportunity to get a full page profile and a full page display ad. And we'll talk about that in a second when we get to the challenge prizes um, and what is available for organizations to win um, for the challenge. So as you all know that Cincinnati, uh, the Cincinnati Challenge is going to be a 10-day giving challenge. It starts November 30th at 5 p.m. and will go into December 10th at 5 p.m. So it starts at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and the first step into making sure to participate in it is to making sure that you're registered. Um, as a registered organization, you're going to be eligible for prizes. Okay, I see that Ivy is back on, so I'm gonna jump back to hand this off to her. Hello, I am so sorry I'm late. Major no technical difficulties, um, but thank you uh, for for going backwards in the um, in the slideshow. I just wanted to take a few minute to a few minutes to um, interrupt the presentation and talk a little bit about the Cincinnati Magazine's Guide to Giving. That is a really nice um, complement to the Gives Challenge. Our challenge, um, actually our um, initiative, our campaign started five years ago with just the guide to giving. We wanted to create an opportunity to um, tell some of the amazing stories of the nonprofit um, community in Cincinnati and really put together a fantastic opportunity for our over 175,000 readers to make a meaningful connection with nonprofits and perhaps learn about an organization that they weren't as familiar with um, and learn about ways that they could support above and beyond just financially. So the Guide to Giving um, was born and we really wanted to dedicate pages and pages of great 
Cincinnati Magazine style editorial content really shining a bright light on the nonprofit community. And with that, we, we wanted to create an advertising option for all of you that was hopefully a little bit more affordable than um, traditional advertising in Cincinnati Magazine. And beyond that, um, we wanted to create an opportunity that was sort of one option for everyone. So whether you are a um, really large organization with a massive development team and marketing budget or a small one-man show, we wanted all of the options to be um, to be on the same level playing field. And so you see um, the cancer-free kids example. Basically what the advertising opportunity is, is a full page spread in the guide to giving, which includes the left-hand page is the formatted profile. And we put that together for you. And this really is a great opportunity for our readers to learn about different organizations and um, how they can help. So it includes the basics like your mission, uh, key services, your board, your leadership, upcoming events. But it also gives you an opportunity to really tell your story and speak to the ways that people can get involved. And then obviously the right hand page is the ad. A few things if you decide to participate in the spread option in the publication, we are including a few kind of bonus options or bonus add-ons um, that will help complement the challenge. And that is, um, you can see the sort of black bar at the bottom of the left-hand page. That is where your direct URL link to your, your landing page will go. So our readers will know that you're participating in the challenge and exactly where to find you to support you. And we also will include a direct social media post, uh, a social link to your landing page. So as, as many of you know who've participated in the past, we do a ton of promotion ahead of and throughout the Gives Challenge. Um, and specifically, we were promoting for folks to go to CincinnatiGives.org. But as uh, an advertiser in the publication, at least one of our organic social posts will be specifically about you with a direct link to your landing page. Your profile will also live on CincinnatiMagazine.com. Um, on our Gives section of, of our website year round, so not only do we create a digital edition of the publication, but your profile will, uh, will live on our site year round until the next year of profiles sort of takes it, its place. And last but not least, um, something we added last year, which was received so well, and that is a bonus full page ad that you can run in the issue of your choice in 2021. And our goal with that, we know many of you have a lot going on at year end, but you also have some important things happening throughout the year, be it a major fundraising event um, or important time of year that you wanna promote. And so this will give you the opportunity to advertise in Cincinnati Magazine in the month of your choice when it makes the most sense for you. And I think that's about it. And obviously we're here for any questions you have, our deadline to reserve space in the Guide to Giving is this Friday, so be sure to reach out if you'd like to go ahead and do that. Thank you so much, Ivy. So uh, as I we mentioned, uh, starts November 30th, so you want to make sure that your organization is registered to participate so that you are eligible to win prizes and win all of the bonus challenges. Uh, but in general, there are so many benefits in participating to, in a giving challenge, such as um, Cincinnati's Giving Challenge. Um, because first off, it spreads awareness of your organization's mission and your work, um, especially when it is community-based um, around a specific area. It provides people within your community 
to feel incredibly passionate and want to support organizations in the Cincinnati area. So as I mentioned, of course, if you haven't registered yet, please make sure you have registered your nonprofit. Um, that's always the first step that you should complete. Once you've registered, uh, if you haven't done so, you can be set up as an administrator for your nonprofit. And then once you've um, created those basic parts, those technological aspects of registering, setting yourself as an admin, customizing your profile, you then can focus on the strategic elements of your campaign. And the second webinar we'll be doing later this month will focus on the strategic elements um, to think about for your campaign. Registration can be found on CincinnatiGives.org. So if you head over there, it's the first call to action. So it's very, um, very hard to miss on the page. Um, so we're gonna start talking about some of those technical aspects that is, are going to be helpful when getting started on the platform to help your organization. As I mentioned, after registration, you want to be set up as an administrator. To be set up as an administrator, you can search your organization on mightycause.com and request to be set up as an admin. Um, if you are already set up as an administrator, uh, you may want to check in and see what other administrators you currently have active on the platform. Um, and you know, just make sure to tidy up, add anyone that needs to receive notifications and have any management tool access or remove any administrators, maybe someone's left your organization and you need to remove them from the platform. Any admin request that is uh, sent to our team, um, we'll, we'll make sure to review that request and verify that individual if it hasn't been already verified by a current administrator. Once you're logged in to your organization page and you have again administrative access uh, you'll see a dashboard on the left hand side uh, screen um, so your dashboard will have key sections that will provide you all of your editing and management tools uh, your sections are divided between your home or your overview your profile reports fundraising and settings. And we'll be going over those um, in more depth in a second. Uh, your overview or your home screen is going to provide you your to-do list. This is where you're going to be able to complete key aspects of your page. And it's a really great starting off point for new organizations on the platform. As well, your home or overview screen is going to provide you key metrics about your organization on the platform. Your profile, uh, is going to provide you with information um, on your organization profile. This is where you can edit your page. Reports is where you're going to be able to access all of the reports on for your organization, any donations that you've received. Fundraising will allow you to access any fundraisers you have. And settings will allow you to control key administrative um, settings for your organization. So again, we'll go over those in more detail throughout this webinar. Customizing your profile um, is going to be one of the most important aspects of this challenge because this is going to be the main page where donors are going to go to make a donation for your organization. So if you are a returning nonprofit, you want to think about the current language that you have on your page. Um, what, how do you want to update it this year? Uh, there have been a lot of world events that have occurred. So utilize that and update your donors on where your organization is currently and what your goals are for 2020 and for 2021. So think of a power, powerful story to tell your donors as to why they should support your organization for 2020 Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Um, for new organizations, you want to consider, again, ask the question if you had to explain to a donor uh, what your organization is about, uh, the impact your organization has on the community and why they should for, support you. That's the type of information you want to include on your organization profile. Within your organization profile, 
Um, and these are actually the first two steps of your to-do list, if you're planning on completing that in your overview or homepage, is to update your logo or add a logo and banner image. This is at the very top of the profile page. The logo is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, and what that means is that it should be a square image. If your image is, if your logo image is rectangular, it will be cropped, so I would highly recommend working with someone who is design savvy or someone who can use a photo editor to make sure that your image is set up to be one-to-one -one or square. The banner image is rectangular, so you have more versatility in regards to the type of images you can use. And of course, we also have some pre-populated images that you can utilize on the platform if you don't have a specific banner image that you want to use. The theme colors um, is the primary color that you see throughout the organization profile. So you wanna make sure that you're editing your theme color to match the branding of your organization. And as I said, a general filter color for your banner image, if you want it to pop out more, if you want it to be more muted, et cetera. For organizations that are brand new on the platform, you have the ability to enable a page metrics on your organization profile. Your page metrics are the will show you your dollars raised by the amount of donors for your organization, as well as the ability to set a goal amount. Um, for returning nonprofits, this is a really important um, key step, is making sure that you're resetting your metrics to the start date of the of Cincinnati gives. So you wanna set your metrics to November 30th at 5 p.m. so that the donations on your page will calculate from that time. Um, so new nonprofits, you wanna set that up for returning ones, you wanna make sure that you're going in and updating that start date and time for your metrics. As well within your metrics, you can choose to um, either remove amount raise, number of donors, or include or not include offline donations for your own fundraising page. Um, your organization profile is going to be your primary donation page that donors can go to to make a donation. However, for many organizations, donors naturally come to their organization's website. Um, and so if you are planning on advertising a specific area of your website for donors to go to, then we highly recommend embedding a donation widget on your website or on the page that you're planning on advertising or marketing to your donors. This widget um, is an embeddable donation button that you could add to your organization's website. So they don't have to go directly to Cincinnati Gives, they can stay on your organization's website and still make a donation and still have it count towards a cha the challenge. So this is just another avenue or another donation button that you can add to your website. Um, you know, also if you're concerned that donors may be going to your website and making a donation there and going to the wrong place, this is another really great option to add to your website to again, make sure that donors are going to the right place and making sure that they're donating to Cincinnati Gives and having it count towards the challenge. So to access the donation widget, it can be found on the organization profile. Um, as you see in the image that I provided here, there is a share button on your profile on the left hand side and once you select that share button you'll see this pop out where you will be provided an iframe embed code so it's html code um, and then you or someone on your team can go into your website's back end and copy and paste this uh, code on to your website so that it's automatically there and as you see on the right hand side the image i have this is what will populate on your website.
within your organization profile, uh, probably the most important element of your profile, as I've mentioned, is your about section or the story that you're telling. Um, this year, we've actually updated our inline text editor, so you have more versatility and more ability to edit and customize the text that you want. You can highlight in different colors, you can um, have your text be in different colors this year. So there's a lot more opportunity for creativity if you are a creative person on the platform. Um, of course, you can still add images and add any videos that you have um, that you wanna share donors. And as well, you have the ability to add an additional tab um, on your organization profile if there's additional information that you wanna provide to your donors. Um, for example, if you have a list of virtual meetings or virtual happy hours that you're doing, maybe you want a designated area for that information, you can utilize the custom tab to uh, provide all those details. Um, as I also previously mentioned for returning nonprofits, um, you wanna make sure that you're reading over the text that you have last year, editing any outdated information you have, and if possible, adding any other updates um, that your organization had. Um, maybe that there's been an impact of, that your organization had from last year's Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Include that information so that donors can understand the impact that their donation made and could have in 2021. At the very bottom of your organization profile, you'll also have the ability to add images and as well as connect with your social media platforms. So within your story section, you can also add videos and photos as I've mentioned, but there is a designated media gallery for any additional uh, photos that you have on your computer that you want to import onto your profile. You can also connect with your Instagram account and Facebook account. Um, if you are very active on Instagram or Facebook and you're already going to be adding images there, I highly suggest connecting your Facebook and Instagram account so that those images are also going to show up on your organization profile for donors to see. So as you start beginning um, to receive donations on the platform, any and all administrators for your organization is going to receive a donation notification email. Um, so you will be notified once a donation is made. Um, you can also access any donor data that you have through the report section of your donations um, of your organization dashboard. The report section is divided up into a couple of different reports. One is all donations, so all donations that you receive through the platform. And you also have an offline donations report and a recurring donations report. So you can even specify the type of donations that you want and filter to create the report that you want. All reports on the platform can be downloaded and exported into a CSV or Excel file. So if you are looking for additional information on donations, for example, if you're looking for the physical address of a donor because you're, you're collecting it, or you're looking to check if they've covered transaction fees, uh, download that report and that report will include any and all additional information related to that donor. Donations are dispersed either twice a month or once a month, dependent on the disbursement uh, type that you've set up on the platform. For direct deposit, which we highly recommend to set up, donations are dispersed twice a month, um, on the 10th or the 25th, dependent on when the donation is made, the date of it. Um, you can enter disbursement information in your settings and we'll be getting to that section in just a moment. Um, within your reports area, there is also a disbursement reports section. So within the disbursement report, you'll have a disbursement history and you can click within the disbursement history and review a comprehensive breakdown of that disbursement. Additionally, any time that we send out a disbursement, we will email all administrators that a disbursement has been sent out and we will provide you a link to your disbursement breakdown to review further. 
For returning organizations, um, a report that is going to be really helpful this year and that I would highly recommend reviewing is your donor retention report. Your donor retention report gives you a snapshot of how your organization is retaining donors year over year. So this is a really helpful marketing tool for your organization for this year's a Cincinnati Gives Challenge. Um, what you can do is head over to your donor retention report and pull up a list of all the donors that you have not retained this year. So you can actually see directly the donors that you were not able to retain this year or last year. And that's a really great list of people to download and reach out to immediately. Um, donors who have given before are more likely to give again. So I definitely highly recommend checking out this report, downloading that list, um, and that being the first people to target for your email marketing. Within the fundraising section of your dashboard, as I mentioned in the very beginning, this is really where you can um, review any campaigns that your organization has created, but also you can customize the checkout flow or your checkout form on your organization profile. The checkout flow is where you can choose your donation levels or add descriptions. So if you want to change the four donation option levels to $10, $200, $1,000, you can go ahead and do that. And then you can add descriptions such as $10 purchases a backpack for a student, um, as an example. Within the checkout flow, you can also opt into collecting donor data such as address information or phone numbers. One part of the checkout flow is the checkout steps where you're editing that checkout form and the actual steps that donors are going through when they're making their donation. The second part of the checkout flow area is your post checkout. So everything having to do with once a donor, donor completes their transaction, what happens? What do they see? And the thank you page is actually the third option on the to-do list or the third checklist. Uh, the thank you page is the page that populates once a donor completes their transaction. Um, so it's going to tell them thank you for donating and you have the ability to customize that language, provide any images, videos, perhaps you want to send them to a specific area for your website, also a really great opportunity, maybe you have a newsletter that you want donors to subscribe to, you can utilize the thank you page to provide all of that information. Uh, if you are a returning nonprofit, again, I highly recommend to going into your fundraising and checkout flow section and revisiting your thank you page and making sure that the language that you have stated there is updated for this year's campaign. Of course, with the checkout steps and also the post checkout, there are previews for both of those. So if you want to see what donors will see, if you want to see what their thank you page will look like, you can always go ahead and preview that. As well, within the checkout flow, uh, at the very bottom of your post checkout section is the ability to add a custom message within the tax receipt that we send out. Um, so if there is another call to action that you want to send out to donors, a personal thank you that you want to include in that email that's sent out to donors after they've completed their transaction, you can complete that in your post checkout. One of the fundraising strategies that's really common and popular on the platform is matching grants. Um, and that is also something that can be found in the fundraising section of your dashboard. And we'll also go over in more detail matching grant strategies in the second webinar we'll be hosting. Um, a matching grant allows you is a marketing tool uh, that many organizations use um, in order to incentivize donors to make a donation, to make a larger donation. And donors typically are really receptive to it because they know their dollar or their donation is going to make a larger impact. As well, uh, one of the bonus challenges available for Cincinnati Gives is has to do with matching grants. So to add a matching grant, onto the platform, 
um, you would go to your match manager and select create match. Within the match manager, you can provide information on your match, such as the sponsor, the title, start date and time, any conditions you want set. It is not required for the grantor to uh, provide their match on their platform. Um, however, offline donations will not count towards the leaderboard or for prizes. So if possible, we highly recommend having your grantor make their donation online on, through the platform. If you choose to have your grantor, or if you've agreed upon with your grantor that the match will be paid not through the platform, they're going to be paid through check, um, then you may want to select uh, the include match value in page metrics option through your matching grants tool. What this does is includes the match amount in your own fundraising page metrics. Now, this won't be included on the leaderboard because the donations being made offline, but for your own metrics, if you want that included, you can enable that to do so. Um, as I also mentioned, there are a couple of conditions that you can set up on your match, um, such as having it be included on any fundraisers you can create, as well as having including offline donations on the match. Um, you can have this enabled, but again, offline donations are not going to count towards the leaderboard or for prizes. So you don't have to um, have that enabled if you don't want to. So the last section of your organization dashboard is settings. Uh, and this is where you're going to find all of your general settings. Um, so the ability to remove and add administrators can be found in the admin section of your settings dash sec settings section. If you need to update your legal mailing address or your legal name, you can do so through the organization info section of your dashboard. If you need to set up or update direct deposit information, you can do so in the disbursement settings of your organization dashboard. And if you need to update your URL or you want to customize social sharing options, so the image or the text that is uh, populated when a link to your profile page is shared on Facebook or Twitter, uh, you could do so through general settings. Um, so the settings will encompass a lot of key uh, aspects of the platform um, that you'll need to update on the back end. So some key resources that we have available on the platform um, are all available within the toolkit. So within the toolkit, you'll find information on FAQs, basic how-tos, we have a whole support form that will go through basically this information that I've sp um, spoken about. Uh, it will break down um, your organization dashboard, etc. We also have templates available um, if you need any help on composing emails or social media. And we also have images available if you need that for any of your marketing purposes. So please feel free to check out all of those resources that are available to you. Additionally, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to our support team and we're always here to help you. So now that we've gone through some key information about the platform, um, your dashboard, we're gonna just go over the challenge prizes and rules uh, for Cincinnati Gives. So the grand prizes this year, which can be found in the rules and prize section of Cincinnati Gives, um, the first place will receive $10,000 overall in regards to grand prizes. Second place will receive $6,000. Third place will receive $4,000. Fourth place will receive $2,000. And fifth place will receive $1,000. And again, this is in regards to the grand prize overall. Um, any winners will be notified post the event. Um,
With the bonus challenges, we have seven bonus challenges available that organizations are eligible to win. Um, so the first is the Meet Your Match Challenge. Um, so that will go through from November 30th to through December 10th. So you have the entire uh, Cincinnati Gives Challenge to win that specific bonus challenge. Um, so you must meet your match of $500 or more. Um, and if you are able to meet that, then you're going to be entered in a chance to win. And only two organizations are going to be selected from organizations that meet that eligibility. And you have the ability to win $2,000 for the Meet Your Match Challenge. The second challenge, the Giving Tuesday Bonus Challenge, which only uh, goes on Giving Tuesday, so December 1st. Uh, will be organiz the organization that raises the most dollars during Giving Tuesday, so December 1st, um, is eligible to win $2,000. The second highest will receive $1,000, and the third is $500. So in total, organizations are eligible to win $3,500 on the platform. The next challenge that is available is bonus number one, um, and that is on December 2nd. Uh, for bonus challenge number one, the organization that has the most unique donors will win a prize of $1,500. So that one is very specific to unique donors on December 2nd. Bonus challenge number two, um, will be the top two organizations to raise the most money online on December 3rd will win will each win $500 and two tickets to the Cincinnati Magazine um, Saver event. So uh, again, that is based on December 3rd. Bonus challenge number three are the two organizations that who have raised the most online over December 4th to December 6th will receive a full page ad in Cincinnati Magazine. Bonus challenge number two will be the two organizations that raise the most online on December 8th. And then the last bonus challenge is uh, the organization that is able to raise the most online on December 9th will win a $2,000 in digital ad spend on CincinnatiMagazine.com. And again, all of this information is provided on the rules and price section of CincinnatiGives.org. One thing that I want to note is that organizations are eligible for the grand prize. However, organizations are only eligible to win two bonus challenges. So after you've won two bonus challenges, you are not eligible to win any other bonus challenges on the platform. Offline donations will also not be counted towards the challenge. And organizations cannot donate to themselves. If you have friends, family, if there are board members that want to use their own personal funds, that's fine. However, you cannot use your organization's funds to make a donation to your own organization. So as I mentioned um, throughout this webinar, if you have any questions about the platform, um, please contact support at mightycause.com. We're always here to answer your questions, help guide you through any process that you're stuck on or any questions that you have. And the next webinar will be October 21st on Wednesday. Uh, we're gonna be talking more about some of the strategic elements that we briefly spoke about, such as matching grants, telling your story, marketing tips and social media tips. Um, so please utilize um, the registration link on the toolkit to sign up for the second webinar. Um, I'm going to hold off for the last couple of minutes for any questions that anyone has um, in regards to the platform, um, the Cincinnati Gives Challenge.
So a question that we have is about offline donations. Um, so can offline donations still be entered even if they won't count? Um, so yeah, so offline donations, as I've mentioned, they will not count towards overall, overall leaderboards and prizes. However, if you are still receiving offline donations and um, you, know, you have a, um, a check that you still wanna include for your own report information, feel free to enter that through your report section on your dashboard. Um, and there is an offline donation button where you will be able to enter that information. As well, if you have any other questions on outside of the platform, um, if you have any questions for Cincinnati Magazine, you can also feel free to ask them here. Or uh, if anything comes up afterwards, we're more than happy to um, for them to Cincinnati Magazine and have them answered for you as well. So feel free if you have any questions right now to ask them. This webinar will be available for reference right after this webinar is finished. We'll also provide this slide deck as well, so you can download this, um, this slide deck and you can review it as well. Um, in the second webinar, we'll also make sure to highlight some key things that we've mentioned within this webinar um, if you have any colleagues that have missed this one and are planning on joining the second webinar. Uh, so the question is, the deadline this Friday to uh, is to register for an ad for Cincinnati Magazine. Uh, Ivy, do you want to take this question? Yeah, I can, I can answer that question. So that's the deadline just to reserve the space. Um, from there, the, the space for the ad in our guide to giving. From there, we'll begin working on the profile for you. And if you also need our help with designing the ad, we can do that. Um, but that's all we really need by Friday is sort of the, the thumbs up, the green light that you do want to go ahead and reserve the space. Um, we do get some questions regarding when will I be invoiced for this. Typically, traditionally, we don't invoice until the publication comes out. Um, it will be. Um, sent along with the December Best of the City issue of Cincinnati Magazine, which comes out right before Thanksgiving um, and is sent to all of our subscribers. So that is when you will receive your invoice. However, um, we have been very flexible in the past for um, many organizations that are on a calendar fiscal. If you need us to hold off an invoice in 2021 to hit next year's fiscal, that's something we can do or obviously pre-invoice to get it taken care of on this year's fiscal. Hope that answered the question. I don't think we have any further questions coming up. Um, like I said, if you have any technical help or need any technical assistance, please reach out to us as well. If you have any questions for Cincinnati Magazine, um, we're more than happy to also forward that to Ivy and the Cincinnati Magazine team. Um, this webinar will be added right after on the toolkit. Um, so thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. And I hope it was helpful for oral, for everyone that's attended. All right. Well, have a great rest of your afternoon, everyone. Have a great day.